What's the last proclamation that the church proclaims before we head out? What? Go in peace. To, uh, I usually say that. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. What's what's the reply of the church? Thanks be to God. There we go. That's the eternal proclamation and the eternal attitude of the faithful church. Thanks be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, usually people are quite willing to give thanks to God for all the good that they have in their lives. Yet, just saying thanks to God in a superficial sense, or only in the good times, is actually not expressing thanksgiving at all. Yeah, what about those tough times, anyhow? I know many of us have dealt with extremely difficult times in our lives. Well, we take the road of the health, wealth, gospel, I suppose, and just pray and God will take it away and give us everything, right? No. St. Paul prayed to the Lord to take away his affliction. He says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. God has other plans for St. Paul's spiritual needs. And God responds saying, my grace, my Holy Spirit is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Are we to believe that St. Paul's illness or whatever the thorn in the flesh was, that that was beneficial to him? Well, the truth is, and Jesus mentions this in the gospel, one's spiritual health is number one priority even before one's physical health. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. So if our spiritual health is more eternally important than our bodily health, do we ever ask ourselves this question, is my good health that I have, such as it is, used for good? Used for good on a consistent basis? Or not? God forbid if we should ever ask this question, should I ask for good health or an illness? Which is better for me? Which is better for you in your spiritual life? What's better for each of us is to accept God's will. Which brings us to thanksgiving no matter what God places before us. Because God ultimately knows what is best for us. And as a free human being, I just don't like that. However, I love God. And I know God loves me. And maybe God knows better than I what I need in order to become more spiritual healthy. More spiritually mature. So then, how does one express thanksgiving might be a good question on this Harvest Thanksgiving in this Thanksgiving weekend. Well, let's look at a couple. Well, maybe more than a couple. Did you know that attending the liturgy joyfully with anticipation and participation is expressing thanksgiving to God? Again, we say it every time we leave. Thanks be to God for what we've done and what we are about to do. Yet there's those temptations that will sneak up to prevent us from attending. And we all know this at a soul deep level. 
And sometimes, I know, like the preacher that said, this is, this is an old one. It was, actually I gave it away before I started. The fellow that said to his mother, I don't want to go to church. The people hate me. The people make fun of me. I just don't like it at all. They're always asking me hard questions. I'm not going to go. And the fellow's mother said, well, you got to go because you're the pastor. <laughs> Do we come joyfully with participation and prayer and anticipation? That's expressing thanksgiving to God. The temptations will sneak up, but we need to set those aside. Our feeble excuses haven't even an ounce of the expression of thanksgiving within them. Another expression of thanksgiving, what if you came to the liturgy a few minutes early? What would you do? Stare at the walls? Fidget? Look at your watch saying, when's this, when's this going to start? When's this going to get over with? What about if you begin with silent prayer? And I know some of you do already. Silent, intimate prayer. Just you, just God, the Holy Trinity. What about taking time for meditation, for reading the lectionary scripture lessons in preparation for worship? That's giving thanks to God. Thankfulness for the, uh, the liturgy. Thankfulness for the Holy Scriptures. Thankfulness that you can read. The list goes on and on and on. The psalmist reminds the church of this. Psalm 108. O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. And I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your mercy is great above the heavens. And your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. And your glory above all the earth. Are you aware that people see you coming here? They might know that you follow Christ. Oh my, wouldn't that be terrible? That is an act of thanksgiving, coming together to worship in spirit and in truth. Well, how else can we express thanksgiving to God? Well, in our second lesson, St. Paul mentions a number of forms of prayer, intercessions, thanksgivings, so prayer is a strengthening act of thanksgiving for the weakest and for the strongest. You remember St. Ananias and St. Paul, then Saul of Tarsus in the book of Acts. Christ Jesus appears to Ananias, who's the Bishop of Damascus and also one of the 70 disciples that are sent out by Jesus. The Christ commands him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Right? Or, or, see the timing that goes on here? And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive sight. Then Ananias immediately went. No, that's not right. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who come and call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must gain. No, how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So not only is prayer strengthening for Saul of Tarsus, 
but suffering would become his strengthening as well. God's eternal kingdom is upside down as far as this world is concerned. God can bring good out of all that happens. And as we do know, Saul of Tarsus would become the martyr that the church calls St. Paul. And he would endure all kinds of acts for and against him in his grateful thanksgiving that he gives to God. How about somebody else? What's another example in Holy Scripture? Does anybody recognize the name Daniel? Prophet Daniel, he was given a gift by God to interpret King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was all that in a bag of chips to everybody. God on earth. But Daniel was given the power to set aside his human pride and to speak the truth in love. And he proclaims this, humans are not infallible, even kings, and the only indestructible kingdom is the kingdom of God. So he acted upon his gift. Acting upon the gifts that God has given you is also giving thanks to God. So that gift that he was given was to be able to interpret the king's dream. And this is how Daniel thanked God. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness. The light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. And the king gave him a bunch of gold, right? No. Nope. Ended up in the, where? Lion's den. Thanks be to God for putting me in the lion's den. See, we don't know what God has in store. Did he know that God was going to shut the mouth of the lion? No. Whatever your will is, that's what I want my will to be. He defied all the social and legal issues surrounding worshiping the one true God because everybody was told to worship the idol set up for Nebuchadnezzar, or you could worship Nebuchadnezzar would be equally as well. Do we thank God for being born from above in the church among the other adopted children of God? Thanksgiving is also manifest by humility in prayer. Humbleness means that we are willing to be obedient to the will of God. Remember what happened to Israel when they turned against God in the wilderness after God freed them from Egypt. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Some were bitten, some died. The people cried to Moses, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. And Moses did pray. He, he humbled himself. He could have said, no, you made your bed, lie in it. No, he humbles himself before God and prays fervently and humbly for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when they look at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If the serpent had bitten anyone, when they looked at the bronze serpent, they lived. This wisdom of humble repentance and humble prayer before God is mentioned again in the third chapter of St. John's Gospel, just in case we didn't get it. The bronze serpent is a foreshadowing 
of Christ Jesus, who was lifted up for our salvation. St. Paul reminds the church, you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. Humbly seeking Christ, acknowledging his great humility in our midst is giving thanks to God. Again, we hear the words of St. Paul, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the pure grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom all things, and by whom all things, and bringing many sons and daughters to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through his own human suffering. The church give thanks to God for Christ Jesus' suffering. Jesus gave thanks to God for his own suffering. Doesn't that seem backwards and upside down? The reality is, is that true thanksgiving that comes from deep within our souls ultimately purifies the heart and the soul. Hear the psalmist. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart, for as me, my feet stumbled, my steps slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as others, nor are they plagued like others. Therefore pride serves as their necklace, violence covers them like a garment, their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than their heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression, and they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth, and waters of a full cup are drained by them, and they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who are always at ease, they increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence, for all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood what their end would be. For surely you have set them on slippery places and you will cast them down to their own destruction. Pride, humility, through the expression of thanksgiving, Believing that all you receive from God are gifts of God. And you will lead a life filled with joy. You will learn to rejoice in all things and in any situation that God wills. Humbleness and suffering forge that purity of heart within the great prophets and saints. So along with St. Paul with his thorn in the flesh. We say with him, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. When St. Paul was in jail, he'd sing in great joy to the astonishment of the prisoners and the jailers. His love of God, his purity of heart, were clearly evident to all that saw him. If you get a chance, read that Akathis, that hymn of thanksgiving that I sent to you. And if you want, start at the end and see who wrote it. May we all pursue the life of thanksgiving in which God's will becomes our will. In this, our hearts and our souls are strengthened and purified. 
and thanksgiving and praise increase and our glory increases. This thanksgiving and beyond this season in our daily spiritual endeavors take hold as the ancient prayer of the church reminds us. Let us give thanks to the, the, to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, for he has covered us with mercy, covered us with love, spared us and accepted us as his adopted children, gifted us the Holy Spirit to support us, to teach us and empower us, gifted us with our guardian angel to guard us and help us and pray for us. Thanks be to God for God's indescribable gifts that has indeed brought us even to this hour. Amen.